I want to go ahead and welcome everyone to today's Kernel of Knowledge webinar series. This is hosted by the Greater Midwest Region of the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, housed here at the University of Iowa. Um, hence the kernel in our kernel of knowledge um, webinar <laughs> series. So I'm going to go ahead and get started to make sure we have enough time for all of the content and hopefully some questions for you uh, at the end. Just a few ho housekeeping items. You are all uh, automatically muted upon entry, so please use the chat panel to make questions or comments. You'll notice in the, in the panel that you can use the drop down menu to designate who the chat goes to. Please mark all participants if you would like to see, um, if you like everyone to see your chat uh, comment. You can also just send them directly to me. Um, also, this session is being recorded. We will post this on our National Network of Libraries of Medicine YouTube channel for future viewing or reference in the next week or so. <clears throat> this webinar will provide one CE credit from the Medical Library Association. And I will send that out in an email later this week, or um, actually it's Friday, next week. So um, don't, don't email me that question. <laughs> um, and I want to introduce myself really quickly. My name is Bobby Newman, and I'm the Community Engagement and Outreach Specialist here at the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, Greater Midwest Region. And it's my responsibility to connect with public libraries in our 10 state region, as well as across the country. And your presenter today is Tony. He's the Assistant Director for the Community Services for Oceanside Library since 2015. Prior to that, he was the Head of Litigation and Managing Partner for a law firm in Garden City, New York that he started in 1960. I'm sorry. Ooh, I tried to make you much older, Tony. Yeah. 1986. <laughs> uh, he received his undergraduate degree from the University of Richmond and his Juris Doctorate from St. John's University School of Law and is currently enrolled at the University of Kentucky seeking his Master's in Library Information Science. With that, Tony, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I will let you share yours. Okay. And you can uh, take over. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to go right to sharing my screen. Uh, and uh, hopefully this works. All right. Do you see my screen? Yes, we do. Okay. Excellent. So first of all, I, I want to thank Bobby and I want to thank the National Network of Library Me Libraries of Medicine for, uh, for this opportunity. Um, Library is a concept, it's not a building. This is something that we've been ingrained in in our culture in, uh, in my building right from the start. It is, it's a concept, it's not a building. We're not, we're not governed by the four walls of the, uh, of the structure. At the Oceanside Library, our mission uh, has been uh, to be our community's leader in literacy, culture, early and continuing education, discerning entertainment, and to serve as its center. We don't have a village, uh, we don't have a mayor. Uh, we're part of the town of Hempstead, which is the largest township in the, uh, in the United States, it serves about 800,000 people. Um, and so we, we, we are kind of split up. We don't have a center. Um, and so what we've been doing here at, at the Oceanside Library is creating us as to be the center of our, uh, of our uh, community. Uh, and I have to say right at the start, I probably have the best board uh, in, uh, in America, and I have the best director in America, and I have a, the best team in America. So everything that you're going to be hearing uh, about going forward is based upon the, uh, the culture uh, that's been built uh, at the library. Um, and that comes from a board that says yes, uh, that hired me specifically to make drastic changes uh, in the way that uh, the library works. Uh, and I have a director who says yes a lot, almost all the time. Uh, and when she says no, she's always right. And, uh, and again, I have this wonderful team that we put together that just goes above and beyond. So information and entertainment. At, at the core, you have to, we have to all remember, libraries have always been about information and, and entertainment. Before Andrew Carnegie started building the, the public libraries as we know them today, that's what we've always been about. We've always been about providing books. Initially, it was books that contained information and books that contained entertainment. Next to the uh, Encyclopedia of Medical Knowledge, we had Charles Dickens. And we still do that today. Those, those are our two uh, main, uh, main core functions, if you will. And the way we present that, does, it, it, the way we present it changes, but it, it ultimately does not make a difference. Um, 
whether it was cave paintings or whether it was chiseled on stone or it was papyrus or folios or hardcover or paperbacks or ebooks, it's always been about delivering information. It's always been about delivering stories. It's always been about the words. So just a little bit about Oceanside Library. Uh, we're a uh, suburban library on, uh, on the South Shore of Long Island uh, in New York. Uh, we service about 38,000 patrons. Um, and uh, and that's, that's essentially who we are. A lot of what we did, a lot of the changes that we made over the last five years are a result of Superstorm Sandy, which back in 2012 really decimated our community. And the problem was that after we got back up and running, our library really didn't take the lead in anything. Uh, we did not become the center of providing information or support or anything along those lines. And our board wanted to make changes. And uh, that was one of the reasons why I got, uh, I got brought in here. One of the things that we did was we drastically changed programming. We drastically changed a lot of our, um, a lot of our policies over the last uh, year and a half or so uh, with, uh, with our director, Chris Mara. We've, uh, we've looked at uh, a ton of different policies about the way we deliver services, about the way we even market the books. Uh, and uh, going before this happened, uh, 14 out of the last 15 months, we had increased circulation. So that has nothing to do with programming, but it's just part of the mindset. We also changed the way we address problems. We had the opioid crisis hit right about five years ago in Long Island. We started losing a lot of uh, local kids. And so we, we took the lead on providing services and providing information and providing Narcan training and providing support groups uh, to really become the community leader. And when I say that the, uh, the library, we're not bound by the building. Um, we have been running programs online, not a lot before this happened. Uh, but we'd run a lot of uh, programs outside the building, at local bars, at local cafes, in parks, in different stores and, and, uh, and businesses around town. Um, every month, we run programs outside of the building uh, of all different types. Um, it's, it's to drive home the message that we are part of the community, that we're the leaders in the community, uh, and we want to make sure that everybody uh, understands that. Uh, again, the reason why I'm going through some of this history is because it's important to see how we were able to do what we did uh, uh, initially. Before I took over, we had done projects or, or, or programs with very few community partners. Like some of the town people, our local garden club, our fire department would help us run a, uh, a babysitting program and six artists per year. Over the last five years, we started partnering with a lot of people and a lot of people, and a lot of people, and more, and more. So far, we've partnered with over 250 businesses, government officials, uh, and agencies, nonprofit organizations, colleges and universities, healthcare providers, uh, hospitals, uh, local hobbyists, okay? So what has been the result? The result is that uh, we increased programming uh, attendance 72 percent without a single extra dollar in our budget and that's a whole different different topic but i want you to understand that once this happened we were able to turn to these people right away and create programming at no cost to the library right immediately because these were already our partners they were already in place so our initial reaction we closed. We got the word from uh, from the county that we should close. We got the word at about two o'clock on Friday the, the 13th. Um, we immediately uh, brought the staff together. We had made the announcement. We closed as of nine o'clock that night. We ran our first online program on Saturday, March 14th. Uh, by Monday, uh, by that Monday, we were up and running with three or four programs a day. And currently, uh, we're running up between six and 10 online programs a day. In this month, we've had over 3,000 people attend uh, our various programs. Um, it's a, it's a, a it's a, again, it's, it's a mark of how great my staff is uh, and uh, how quickly we were able to respond to this. Um, so what tech did we use? Well, we had already been using GoToMeeting. We had been using GoToMeeting to do online book discussions. We had tried to do Facebook Live with the book discussions. Didn't really work out very well. We had a hard time keeping up with the comments. 
we've we've tried uh, doing Twitter chats with it we, and, and everything, but we wound up we, we settled on GoToMeeting. Um, and so when this happened, we immediately turned to GoToMeeting. We already had the account. We already had some staff that was trained on it, um, and so we stayed with it. Uh, obviously, most people I think now are using Zoom. Uh, our schools are using Zoom, and if this wasn't such a short, hopefully short-term uh, event, we probably would would switch to Zoom. There's a few features on Zoom that I like better than GoToMeeting. Um, so, uh, for instance, you, that you can mute everybody and they can't unmute themselves. Um, so, if you haven't started already, if between the GoToMeeting and Zoom, I would probably go with Zoom. Um, we also use Facebook Live. We've used it for for to transmit programs, and we still use it. And we have a YouTube channel. So there's a lot of different ways of, of getting that done. Um, but I would suggest to you that the biggest issue is just try, just try, don't be afraid. Okay. So the first thing you got to do is you got to train your staff. Now there's all types of, if you don't have anybody on staff that can train you on go to meeting or on zoom or whatever platform you choose, there are a million YouTube courses. There's, there's ways of learning. So, but you have to train your staff because they have to be comfortable in what they're doing. Also know this, the tech is clunky, okay? It doesn't always work great. Um, it, it's, it's just, it is, it's just, it's not there yet. I mean, could you imagine if this would have happened five years ago, we would all be dead in the water uh, as far as running these programs. And five years from now, we'll be looking back at this and saying, boy, how did they, how did they handle that? But I'm an old guy, okay? I mean, I, I, I predate the internet and I remember very well uh, uh, using, uh, um, dial-up services. Uh, so, um, you know, it, 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 the technology changes, it's clunky. Uh, when, whatever you do, whichever one you use, use the mute box, the mute and, uh, and the chat box for programs like this where you're giving information. Uh, obviously, it's different if you're running a, uh, a socialization program, and I'll talk about those in a second. You have to instruct the patrons, okay? You have to instruct them at the beginning of the program, a little bit throughout the program, we also provide videos. We've, we've created a video, our tech librarian, Jamie, provided a, a great video on our YouTube channel. Um, and you can go that and you can use it. And it tells patrons how to use the, uh, how to use GoToMeeting. Uh, but there's other, other resources as well. Experiment, have fun with this, okay? This horrible, horrible time, have fun with this. Don't worry about being perfect. You're not going to be perfect. You're not, it's not going to come out, it's not gonna come out professionally. I was just watching our local TV station uh, yesterday, and when they went to the meteorologist, she was laughing because her kids were climbing all over her. Her husband was was in uh, track shorts, desperately trying to get the kids out of her out of her shot. Nobody cares. Our patrons' reactions. Okay, I have found that our patrons have been extremely patient and understanding. Okay, now let me repeat that. I'm in New York. Okay, and our patrons are patient and understanding. Uh, so I guarantee you that your patrons are going to be patient and understanding. The other great thing is that they've been very appreciative. Whatever we've been able to put up, we're getting a lot of love uh, from our community with, with what we're doing, and you will too. And that's not why we're doing it, and that's not why you should be doing it, but it is a, uh, an offshoot of it. So now, uh, the types of programs that we've been running. Well, first we've been running story times. That was the easiest thing to put up. There was some initially some questions about um, whether we would have the copyrights, et cetera. We made the, determ we made the determination immediately to, to immediately start doing it. Um, and I, you know, part of this is, again, my background as an attorney. Uh, I've also been very involved in local organizations, local nonprofits, politics. And I said to my staff right away, uh, I cannot believe that there's going to be a publisher or an author who is going to, in this time, make a fuss over some library reading uh, his or her story online. What we have made the choice to do is to not uh, record them and keep them uh, on our, our YouTube. Um, I would suggest that if you do, uh, and we may make, that, make a change on that because I have local libraries that are telling me that they're getting an awful lot of hits, uh, a lot of views. Uh, on the recorded story times. Um, my suggestion is if you do it, just do it temporarily. Don't, don't keep them up permanently. Then, then you really are, uh, could be affecting somebody's, um, somebody's income uh, down the line. And we do want to protect our authors. Uh, but in this time, I would not worry about 
the story times at, at all. The, uh, the second, the another program that we were immediately able to do with, were the read tos. And by the way, the story times, it's not only just our staff that does the story times. We've reached out our county executive, some of our state politicians, uh, some of our local politicians, um, and now we're we're starting to line up, uh, like for instance, members of our school board, some community leaders, some business leaders, uh, who who are coming in and uh, uh, they're becoming less and less afraid of uh, of uh, doing a story time. Uh, we've done dozens and dozens of these over the last month, uh, and uh, the only person who tanked, who did just a horrible, horrible job, was me. I did a, I tried to do, uh, I tried to do something fancy with the computer, and of course, it failed to do it. Uh, so you can just keep those, those story times uh, um, simple. The read tos. We have our uh, one of our librarians is uh, reading a young adult book, uh, kind of going chapter by chapter each day. Um, and she has a, uh, a a solid crowd that that crowd. She has a solid group of of uh, kids that come uh, come in with her. Uh, as far as numbers go, um, I will throw some of the numbers out to you. Um, the uh, story times initially we were getting sixty or seventy uh, in our morning session. That's down to probably about twenty or twenty five each day. Uh, the afternoon story times that we've been running. Uh, once our schools got up and running with online programs, we saw the story times uh, take a dive uh, in the afternoon. Um, and so, you know, we, we are constantly looking at these and making adjustments. Um, and that's why I say we ex experiment. Let me, I want to take a, a slight tour on the, the, the side tour on this. At the library, at Oceanside, we say that there are two different types of programs that we run. We have numbers programs and we have impact programs. Numbers program, like when we run our Dr. Seuss birthday bash, we expect to get 750 to 800 people, and that's what we get. Uh, when we ran our own uh, Comic Con, we called it Ocean Con, we were expecting five or 600 people. We got more than that. I want that. When we run a concert that we're paying money for, um, I want the room filled. But we also do a lot of impact programs. We do um, small group things like for instance we, we team up with the alzheimer's association to, to run a support group two or three people five people that's great we do a lot of special needs programs we probably run uh during the uh when we're up and running uh, 40 to 50 maybe more sessions of special needs programs a month um if i run a sensory friendly movie where we keep the the sound down a little bit and the uh the lights up a little bit and relax the rules about staying in your seat when we run those and only two families show up, I don't care. I'll run those from now until St. Swithin's Day. So it's the same thing with the online. There's gonna be some things that you're gonna find that uh, are really gonna work, and there's some things that aren't, and don't worry about it. Uh, the next thing that we did was immediately, we were able to up and run with book chats and book discussions. Uh, we differentiate those two. The book discussions are about a specific book. That's the standard old book discussion. Um, we've been sl moving slightly away from those, and not, not that we're cutting them out, but we are uh, adding a lot more book chats, even when the building is open. And with the way we uh, the way we uh, describe a book chat is that that's where somebody where people come in and just discuss what they're reading. Um, we had planned on rolling these out in a genre specific manner uh, at the library before this this happened. That was in our next uh, slate of uh, of programs. But we're doing that now. So basically, we're saying, hey, listen, come on in. Let's talk. What are you reading? What do you recommend? Uh, you know, let's talk. Let's talk about that. Um, and that's been, the, those have been important and they're easy to put up. You're just basically having a drop in kind of a thing. You'll see that we do a lot of that. Healthy Oceanside. One of the first programs that I put in when I when I took over back in uh, 2015 was we called it Healthy Oceanside. And we started running a series of health related programs. Um, and I will tell you this, we run typically uh, when the building is open, probably six, eight, ten uh, healthy Oceanside programs uh, a month, plus exercise programs, plus yoga, plus meditation. Um, at all at no, all of the healthy Oceanside programs, with the exception of the exercise programs, uh, don't cost us anything. Um, and what I did was reached out to local hospitals, local um, uh, local uh, healthcare providers to provide us programs. Um, and so we, we were able to do was to immediately reach back out to those partners. That's why I told you about them. 
So Malloy College is a college just a, a few miles from our, uh, our library. We work with them. We work with every one of the colleges and universities on Long Island, and we, we're blessed with, to have a lot of them. But, we, but Malloy has a counseling center, and we had been working with them a lot. So that Saturday morning, I've actually been honest with you, it's probably Friday afternoon, I shot them an email, uh, and we immediately, that, that first week, had a, a how, to, how to cope when the world changes underneath you. Um, and since then, they've run a number of these, those kinds of programs. Uh, how to, how to address, uh, address this with your children. Um, coping mechanisms that, that you can use, things like that. We had a local pediatrician that had, had done a number of programs for us. He immediately signed on and came in and did a program again about what to watch for with your children, what to do with your children. Uh, we then have reached out to counselors and therapists that we've worked with in the past, and we've set them up. Same kind of a thing. Let, you know, that we, we set them up. Uh, we have a staff member uh, who uh, is the organizer of the meeting and is there. And then uh, they make a presentation and they answer the questions that, that people have. Um, we, okay, one of the things that we do is we do have exercise programs and we reached out to our presenters on those. Um, I don't want to get ahead, too far ahead of myself, but I should tell you, my board made the determination the day we closed that anybody that we had booked we were going to pay, even though we were canceling the programs. Uh, we did that for a number of reasons. One of, one, of the reasons, one of the things is we felt it was the right thing to do. Uh, the second thing is that these are presenters that we use all the time and we need them to stay in business. Uh, and we had already budgeted the money. Okay, we're in a kind of, a, you know, we would not listen. If I was still running the law firm and I had no income coming in, would I be making hard choices? Yeah, but you know what? We're still, we're still having our budget money coming in. And so to hoard it or to, to save a couple of dollars now, we just felt it was the wrong thing to do. Uh, that's the way my director felt. That's the way my board felt. Um, and so it, it, we were able to do that. So we then were able to go back to, to these people and say, listen, we're paying you anyway. So how about you run a couple of programs for us? And they have all jumped on it. Uh, anybody that had the technology or that could figure out how to use the technology has jumped in. So we've run exercise programs, we've run yoga, we've done a lot of meditation, okay, uh, which is, uh, um, you know, have, have been very popular programs for us. Now, the Alzheimer's Association would run a lot of programs for us, and they would also do uh, count, uh, these, uh, group, uh, these, these group programs uh, for their uh, for caretakers, et cetera. And we also had a counseling group that was meeting at the library. Since they can't do that, they've set up their own separate uh, remote uh, access. And all we've been able to do for them, unfortunately, is, um, is to advertise that and, and to drive our patrons uh, to use those, uh, those uh, facilities. Um, I don't know yet, quite frankly, how many of our people have gone and used them, uh, but that's the best that we can do. When the opioid uh, crisis hit, uh, we created or we helped create, and they meet at our library, uh, an organization called SAFE, which uh, provides um, information and education on all different kinds of uh, um, substance abuse and mental health uh, issues. Um, and again, they can't run any programs uh, for us per se, but what they've been doing is um, they've put putting up a lot of online content. And what we've done is, is we've shared that for them. Um, so, so as far as whether you can replicate this, my answer is you absolutely can. Just contact your local hospital, contact your local counseling center, contact somebody that's in, in your community that provides this stuff. And I'm going to tell you, I guarantee you that they're going to jump at the opportunity. Somebody asked me uh, once how we were able to get all of these people uh, to work with us when the building was open back, back in the day. And I kept saying, uh, what I tell people is this, you have to pretend that you're a business. Okay, pretend that you're selling, uh, selling advertising. Uh, what we do is we go to, I'll give you the quick pitch. It's a 30 second pitch. I go to people, I said, come, I'll give you a perfect one, a nutritionist. Oh, and by the way, we've had a nutritionist as well. Um, gone to, uh, to a nutritionist. She had a practice in town. I said, I want you to run some programs for us. She said, great. We came up with the topic. We came up with the dates. And she said to me, how much does this pay? And I said to you, you have a practice in town. And she said, yes. And I said, well, Every, every program goes home in our newsletter. That's 10,856 homes. It'll have your name in it. We have a 9,600 person e-blast with a 24% open rate. We do flyers. We have the second largest Facebook page of any library on Long Island. We have Instagram. We have Twitter. God help me. We have Snapchat. We, uh, if you want to do a 15 second or 30 second spot, we'll throw it up on, on YouTube. 
uh, we get everything gets printed in the local papers. How much are you going to pay me? How much are you going to pay me to allow you to come and do a free program for, for us, given all of this marketing? Um, and uh, and that's how we were able to build up uh, th this uh, you know th this uh, cadre of uh, of potential performers. And if you haven't done that before now, you still can do it. There's still time. You still can reach out. It is a uh, I'm telling you that there there are a lot of people that are willing to to step in and and help you. All right. About a year and a half ago, we started a program called Connections. We had done, and this is very important, I think, for today. Um, we uh, we did a lot of research. I did a, a lot of reading um, on loneliness uh, and, and social isolation. And so we started running a, a lot of programs designed specifically to combat it. We took a look at our programs that existed, and we tweaked them so that we had a component that we that would combat it. Uh, and like I said, we created. So what we've done now is obviously this is a huge problem, and and my biggest my biggest concern is that while we are reaching people that have the internet, we, I can't get to those who don't. So one of the things that we've done with that connections idea in mind is uh, we created these drop by and chats. It's just simply we we turn go to meeting on for an hour, we say hey come on drop by and chat about sports, drop by and chat about movies, stop by and chat about anything. Um, and it's designed in my mind to have five, eight people, 10 people, three people. Um, I did one last night, quite frankly, two people showed up, but you know what? Those were two people who otherwise wouldn't have had any contact during the day. Uh, when we, and I knew this was going to work right away because we did one maybe the first Wednesday and we were about halfway through. And one guy said, you know, this is like seven o'clock at night. He said, this is the first socialization I've had all day. Those were his words. That's an exact quote. So putting these things up, even if it's not a formal program, even if it's not a big presenter, presenter just giving people a chance to cut, stop in and chat. So one of the guys last night that stopped in is this guy, Lenny. Lenny's a senior citizen. He lives over in one of the senior complexes. He comes to our programs a lot. He's a widower. Lenny, Lenny stopped and he only stayed in the room maybe about 15 minutes, but it was enough for him to say hi. How you doing? How's everybody by you? Uh, it's it's a great service. We did a parent and caregiver uh, drop in where we said, you know, come come on in and and uh, and talk about, you know, how, how, what are you doing to keep to keep from strangling your kids? Uh, and that went well. We started uh, back when the building was open doing TED talks. Uh, so what we do is we show a TED talk for 15 minutes and then we open it up for uh, for conversation. We typically get 25 to 30 people. We do it at 11 o'clock on a Thursday. We, we roll in the coffee and they get to chat and they get to talk with each other. They get to interact with each other. Um, we, we've tried to replicate that. So we do the, uh, we do the Ted talk uh, uh, and then have a discussion. We then have, have had a number of staff led discussions. Uh, we did a whole discussion. We have a, one of our uh, part-time librarians is uh, very big into Broadway. So they did a Broadway thing. They, 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 we, we've done uh, uh, programs where people just come in and tell us what they're binge watching. Um, one, of, uh, one of our librarians has run a, a discussion about the uh, season ending of This Is Us. Another one is doing a, a million little things tonight. Uh, these are all designed where people can interact with each other. So as opposed to what we're doing now where I'm giving you information and you're listening, uh, they're actually uh, uh, interacting and, uh, and combating some of the social isolation. Um, Special needs. We've run a number of special needs programs. Uh, we do social hours where we just have people drop in. Uh, we did a special needs coloring program. We did a special needs arts and crafts program. One of our special needs kids, uh, he, he's, he's a DJ. Okay, so we did a DJ dance party uh, and we've done book chats. Now we have a part-time clerk uh, who actually has his master's in education and he has, uh, he's our special needs coordinator. Uh, Michael knows all of these people. He's reached out to them uh, personally. Um, and again, we get a nice group. It's not huge. It doesn't have to be. They get to see each other. They get to talk with each other. And that's what part of a lot of this is all about. Uh, outside performers, as I said, we're paying them. Um, and so they've all been willing to step up. The cooking programs are off the charts. Okay, people love the cooking programs. We've worked with the performers and said, as far as the cooking programs go, please, please, please make it about items that people would have at home uh, and make sure that you give alter alternates. You know, you don't have 
you don't have this, can you use that? And people have been very good because the last thing we want to do with any of the uh, arts and crafts programs that we've been running, and we run those too, uh, and the cooking programs, we don't want people running out to the store to get something because, oh my God. We do tell them what, what they're going to need ahead of time, and we do tell them uh, what the ingredients are going to be, but we really, really stress, do not, do not, do not go out to the store to go get this stuff. Um, we have a gardening group and we have the Cornell Extension that's near us uh, and they're, they, they're putting on a gardening program. So we've been able to, it's been very easy to convert the lectures that we were paying for uh, to, um, you know, on different topics for them to just do it uh, online. And uh, that's, that's worked out well. Even our play hooray, um, you know, with a little mommy and me, the roll around programs, uh, we, we're able to put those on uh, online. Um, and then you can work with your presenters, anybody that you had, had already contracted with or anybody that you use. Listen, a lot of them are desperate right now, and uh, they are actively seeking uh, ways of being able to present the program. So if you can do it, um, I strongly urge you to do it. Reading clubs. Now, we uh, convert. We used to have uh, summer reading clubs for um, the teens and the kids about, uh, well, when I came in, we, we, we added the adult one. Uh, but we were looking at it. And it just was, you know, we had people signing up and it was this and it was that. And it was very, so last year we have a new uh, head of adult services, uh, Nadine. Uh, Nadine and I sat down and we went through the entire process and we completely stripped it out, completely stripped it out. We don't need to have somebody's library card number. We don't need to have all their address. I mean, we, don't need, we don't need any of that stuff. So we basically went to an online uh, process. We use Google Forms. Um, and if you go to, we have a website called pagingoceanside.com, pagingoceanside.com, you'll see. Uh, so last year, we, uh, we went this summer, we went to uh, this, this online, we were basically just logging the books. And uh, we went up 400% in our participation. We had just under 1,000 people, uh, just under 1,000 uh, uh, books logged in. Um, so since we were online already, all we did was, uh, I guess it was, we were about a week and a half in, we just created these, we recreated our summer reading, reading clubs. We went to our friends of the library and we said, you know, we put up some prizes and quite frankly, it's not a lot of money. Okay. And you don't even have to put them in. People don't really want the, you know, the prizes of the prize. We all go crazy about the prizes, the little tchotchke stuff we give. Um, but they said we, we, you know, we would. And so the friends of buying uh, very small gift certificates to look to local restaurant, not even the restaurants, but like the, the coffee shops for people to use uh, going forward. They'll get them delivered after we open up the building. Um, but so we opened up the reading clubs uh, and we did th those right away. Um, let's see, staff programs. Okay, so now we have, we have developed a number of staff programs. So for instance, uh, we've done how to's. Um, so we have uh, somebody uh, talking about how to digitize their, their photos, um, how to, uh, um, how to use some of our resources okay so we, we've set up an hour where people can come in and, and we, we talk about how to use some of our resources um we've run trivia contests we do a lot of poetry here for a lot of reasons um uh and so we uh, we do uh, poetry reading we have a couple of features and uh, and an open mic i run that um we've created words with friends um if you want to play against us it's oceanside gaming um and uh so we have a staff member uh, who, uh, well, actually, it's a, it's a series of staff members, one, one a day, uh, runs our uh, Words with Friends. Uh, we've started community service projects for our teens, uh, things that they can do from home. Uh, one of them is to, is to write get well cards uh, to, uh, or messages to our uh, local uh, uh, nursing and adult facilities. Uh, we have a TikTok challenge uh, where we are challenging our teens to do a TikTok of them doing um, chores around the house, whether it's learning how to cook, do the laundry, vacuum, or whatever. Uh, and so, and so we've done that. And again, as I said, we have a number of staff uh, who are doing um, doing chats of, of various sorts. And we're developing more and more of these as we, as we go forward. Um, the uh, the next issue that we have is our virtual information desk. Uh, we added. Uh, um, a chat feature to our uh, website. Um, we'll be using a, a company called Tidio, T-I-D-I-O, um, and telling people that they can uh, they can go there as far as their uh, um, you know as far as finding out about uh, library information, etc. Um, 
calls starting today. Um, our staff, and we, we went with the staff that we are paying that are home, our clerks and our pages predominantly. Um, and what we're doing is we're giving them uh, patrons' names and telephone numbers. Uh, we've trained them on how to uh, block their, uh, their, their own telephone number. We give them a, a short script. And basically, we're asking them to call over all of our patrons, not just the active ones, the ones who haven't been with us for a while. We actually even have a list of the, the ones whose cards have, uh, have expired, just to say, hey, this is the Oceanside Library. We're checking in. How are you doing? Is there anything that we can help you with? We have a lot of online resources for you. Would you like to, would you like to speak with a, with a librarian? Is there anything, any information that you need, anything, anything that we can do? Um, we, have, we stole that point blank from a local library, uh, the Bryant Library in Roslyn, uh, who has had uh, tremendous uh, success with this and a tremendous uh, outpouring from the community. And so while that is not technically a, um, a program, um, I think it, it, it imparts the kind of uh, information that, uh, uh, that we're looking to do. Um, okay, we also teamed up with uh, our local Kiwanis Club. Um, I happen to be a member of Kiwanis, and so what I came up, the idea I came up with was this. We have a lot of restaurants in town. We have a lot of restaurants that are hurting uh, and closing. Uh, we happen to have a hospital in town, Mount Sinai, South Nassau. Uh, and, and so we wanted to do something for that courageous staff as well. So Kiwanis had a PayPal account set up. Uh, we have this huge marketing arm. And so what we did is we combined together and we made, we collected funds, um, funneled it through Kiwanis. Kiwanis then coordinated with the hospital. Um, the hospital, when they want, let's say a, a breakfast, they want 200, 200 bagels or 200 egg sandwiches. Um, and so uh, we then split that order, order up among two different restaurants or uh, eating establishments and uh, paid retail. We did not want to take any discount and we paid retail and um, and they delivered. So we didn't get involved in the delivery. It, it's a bonus for the restaurant. It helps out our, uh, our hospital staff. We also did it with the fire department. Um, and uh, so far we've raised uh, just under $30,000. Um, which, you know, so we're, we're sending, as I said, we're sending food over to lunch, breakfast, lunch, dinner for the night staff and, and for weekends, uh, just to, just to help out and do our part. And again, uh, to, uh, to emphasize that we're part of the, uh, that we're the center of the community. Uh, okay. How are you, how are we marketing all of this stuff? Well, we, we're doing a morning e-blast, um, and I can show you that if I can figure out how to use this and hopefully, uh, Hopefully this is going to work. Well, I'll go through these and then I'll, I'll show you what we did. In the email, we do a thing called Operation Adventure. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, every uh, morning at nine o'clock, I point my cell phone at my screen uh, because uh, a lot of times I have not yet uh, gotten out of my jammies. Um, and uh, uh, we do a home, we call homeroom announcements. Quick two, three, four minute announcement. This is what's going on today. You know, everybody be safe. Uh, we obviously do a lot through our social media. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, we send press releases to our local newspaper, um, and we changed our website over to be a, a virtual uh, virtual library. So if I can do this correctly, and hopefully, uh, hopefully I did this okay. Let me share the screen again, and I'm going to share it to. Okay, so this is what our, our daily e-blast e e looks like. We do a little greeting, okay? Operation Adventure, we uh, show them a, one of the library resources and we give them a daily project suggestion. Sometimes it's, hey, why don't you call three friends? Why don't you clean out that closet? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, we give them library news. This is pretty static. We talk about our uh, online uh, book clubs. Uh, we talk about that uh, we now provide a digital, uh, temporary digital uh, library card through the Nassau Library Service. A system which has been phenomenal. Uh, we have a uh, we redid our front page of our uh, of our website. I'm going to show you that in a second. And we talk about our joint project. And then we list out. We use Event Keeper. So when you click on any of these links, which I won't do because I'm afraid I'm going to lose it, uh, it goes right to uh, the instructions on how to go to the go to meeting for that program. So you can see that on Thursday we did an online story time. We did a play hooray. We did a TED talk. 
We did a book chat. We did another story time. We did that read along. Uh, we had an online program of uh, brain teasers, jokes and riddles that was done by one of our um, of our uh, children's librarians. And we did a drop by and chat for sports. And then we put some of the some of these things. We, we've been stressing the census as well. Um, the, we do a little publicity for upcoming programs. That TikTok program I was telling you about to spread the life skills uh, and the words for friends. Uh, our home, our new homepage looks like this, um, where people can kind of bang in. We give a lot of information about, uh, obviously, about the coronavirus. We share, by the way, all of the time on our social media, uh, any of the uh, the reports from our, our local government, from uh, Governor Cuomo, um, and any other information that might that might be needed. Uh, we have uh, one group in town that has been keeping track of which restaurants are open, uh, and so we share that all the time as well. Um, so, uh, let me get back here, Getting controls, uh, here we'll stop the share. Okay. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll uh, I just want to say it at the outset, um, or in conclusion, if you will, it's never been more important, never been more important for us to be good at our jobs. And being good doesn't mean, as I said, doesn't mean being perfect. But being good means trying. Um, John Kasich uh, said a while ago that in many ways, America is broken at the top. Okay, we have a hard time discussing things with each other. But on the local, local, uh, local levels, we still work. Okay, we still help each other out. I, I made a career shift at a major career shift to come into here because I honestly believe that libraries are, are the last institution that works in America. Our people need us. That's, it doesn't mean that they need, there's not as, while we can't do the things that we need to do in the building, we can provide them with, with a connection with each other, with some socialization, with making sure that they get real information, okay? We want people turning to us for those of you who are librarians, you know, out there, particularly public librarians, we are now recreating an entire profession. Those who were in this in this in institution 10 years ago, obsolete. Five years ago, obsolete. Okay, but that means because we're getting to create it, we can do different things. We can take chances. It's the, the, the many ways this profession is changing from Listen, they no longer, we no longer have a monopoly on information. We no, have, no longer have a monopoly on, on, on books. People have always wanted, uh, we, we've had this information that we wanted to get to people. We have to, be, have to be cognizant of the fact that we can have all the great reference books in the world up on the shelves. If people aren't going to open them, they're not getting the information. That's one of the reasons why we ramped up our programming was because, yeah, we might have that reference desk uh, about medical terms uh, up on that shelf, and we put it up there on the shelf two years ago, and we can take it down next year, and nobody will have ever opened it. But you know what? If you bring in a cardiologist, or you bring in a physical therapist, or you bring in a nutritionist, and people come to your program, you're now delivering the information that they need in a manner and in, in a form in which they need it. When we run book discussions at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to we're going to be running in the library. We're going to be getting a certain uh, group of people, and that's important. And I'm not downplaying that, but I don't know about you guys, but we have uh, tens of thousands of people in my community that are working, that are going to school, that can't get out on a two o'clock in an afternoon for book discussion. We have an op we have an obligation to reach out to them as well. What we're doing now during this crisis. Many of the things that we're doing, we're going to be able to continue after the building opens up. The fact that we can do a book chat with people at eight o'clock at night after they've put the kids to bed, okay, they can grab a, grab, grab a glass of wine, that's a great thing. That's a great opportunity. Does it mean we're going to have to shift around some resources in the future? Yeah. So, but what I would urge you to do is during this time, as horrible as it is, as scary as it is, this is a time for us to experiment. It's a time for us to, to continue with the mission that, that we've signed on to do and to get out this information and entertainment out to, uh, out to our public as best as we can. So 
thank you very much, Tony. This has um, been great. I'm talking uh, to colleagues on the side, like, you should be here. Um, <laughs> I, I've been copying and pasting questions into from chat, and so I'm going to go through some of those right now. We've got some really great questions. Um, so I, I think some of these you answered maybe a little bit later, but we'll just go ahead and, and redo them. Um, so there's a question about running the book d discussions. Are you using Facebook Live or Zoom, and do you have people register? Uh, we have we use and go to meeting um, because, like I said, we had been using that in the past. We do not have anybody registering now. I know that there's some concerns with Zoom about making sure you have uh, you have passwords and stuff. We you know we just haven't done it yet. Um, I I I hate I hate putting up any kind of of, of block uh, on on getting people in. You know, and one of the things that we've done at the library, you know, and and I, this is another thing I should have said. You're going to get people that are going to complain, okay? You, you, you make it Zoom bomb, okay? Ah, and after everybody finishes clutching your pearls, you move on as, as adults. Um, you're going to get people to complain, but we have to get away from, you know, the typical way that libraries deal with when somebody complains is we stop doing what we're doing, and we put up seven signs around the library saying why we're not doing it or why you can't do it anymore. You just got to push through that. You know, we, like I said, we service about 38,000 people. If I get two complaints, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing as long as, unless the complaint, you know, is, is we, we listen and we, we make adjustments, but I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about that stuff. So we don't, we don't like to put up barriers. I don't like, uh, where, wherever we can, we try not to, to register. Great. And there was a question about uh, bombing. So I guess you haven't had any of those incidents. Well, I, I said before we started the program, yeah. we actually had a situation where we had put up a smart TV um, and this poor woman uh, was sitting waiting for a book discussion to start. And she's a woman of a certain age. And um, somebody hacked in and put just really vile porn up, up on it. And we were, you know, we apologized all over the place. We were very upset about it. Um, but she's an adult. And she understood. We didn't do that on purpose. Okay. That wasn't part of the plan. Um, I will say that that uh, discussion group's uh, size tripled in, in, in number once it got out that we were showing porn during the book discussion. But it's, and that's a joke, everyone, it's, uh, they, um, you know, these things happen. I mean, obviously, the one we're most concerned about is with kids, uh, but uh, I'm not going to stop running programs, and I'm not going to put barriers up on the odd chance that something, something bad might happen. Great. Okay, let's see. Um, somebody was asking for, for clarification that all the staff programs you're talking about are being done virtually. Yes, yeah, sure. Everything, every, everybody's home. We're, we're, we're all home. Good. Uh, are you doing some virtual arts and crafts? Yeah, we are. Uh, we have uh, both of our, our staff, mostly through the children's and then some of our presenters. Um, again, we've asked them to modify it to make sure that it's something that people are likely to have around, around the home. We are letting people know ahead of time what we're using. Uh, we're making sure that we tell them what other stuff they can do. And we're stressing, do not, do not, do not go out. Don't be going out to the store to get stuff for this. It's not. It's not that important. It's really just based on what you have, what you think people have around the house. Sure, as best you can. You know, it's it's that's that's what this is. You know, it's uh, um, we un we understand that, but like I said, we we don't want people running out. You know, for this. Yep. Uh, another good question. Um, someone who's in a library that is a little nervous about liability around exercise programs. Are you using a disclaimer? Do you have any advice about disclaimers? Um, well, I will tell you that uh, we are we using disclaimers. I think yeah, I think we have it as part of the thing. You know, the on the event uh, keeper. Uh, you know, to 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 watch it. I will tell you this. Um, you know, and I'm not giving legal advice. Okay, and I'm not, but I'm going to tell you that um, you can have all the disclaimers in the world. It's not going to stop you. That's what you have insurance for. Um, and I will say this also. And I know every time I say this, my director gets angry with me. But I will tell you this. I was a trial lawyer for 30 years. I've never been lied to as much as I have in the library world. And I don't mean that, that as a, uh, can I tell you how many times I've been told you can't do that because the insurance policy says no. Now I've read thousands of insurance policies and I pulled ours and I was able to show that person doesn't say that they lie, the, the, the insurance company doesn't care. Um, or I've been told, Oh no, no state regulations say you can't do it. And I'll say, well, show me the state regulation. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So, you know, again, yes, I would definitely put a disclaimer on, 
definitely when people sign up, if you want to give a disclaimer at the beginning of it, that's a smart idea to do. Uh, but again, that's not something that's going to stop us from doing it. Uh, a couple of people coming back to sort of the numbers question, and I know you talked about this a little bit, but on average, how many people are you getting um, for these programs? Again, it, dep it depends on the program. Um, like I said, the, the, the story times in the morning, we're down to about 20 or 25. Now, that's 20 or 25 logins, okay? So I assume that there's some siblings there. I assume that there's a parent or caregiver there as well. Um, on some of the, the chats, it's, it's five to 10. Um, on some of like the trivia, it was 40 or 50. The pediatrician and the, uh, and the other ones, we were at 70, 75, 80. Great. Um, someone asked, what does SAFE stand for? I don't remember. I honestly, <laughs> okay. I honestly you know, it's, it's funny. I actually, and to tell you the truth, I did the incorporation for them and I got them their 501c3 status and I don't remember what SAFE stands for. Uh, I honestly don't remember. I'm sorry, but it's, uh, it's, they're designed for a mental health, uh, mental health and, and substance abuse. Uh, it's operation SAFE. Uh, when you're doing videos and things that you're sharing, are you, are you sharing that while in the virtual meeting or are you having people watch it and then join for discussion later? Um, with the video, we had to, um, we had to have them watch it ahead of time. You know, the, 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 uh, only because with GoToMeeting, we couldn't figure out how to, um, how to have sound come through when we were sharing our screen. Um, I know that they did another one yesterday and I apologize to you. I was, I meant to swing back with, uh, our project coordinator who, who did who ran it to see whether they figured out the technology on it. But uh, yeah, for, I think for something like that, I think we, we came down to that. We were going to tell people, Hey, go watch this and then we'll discuss it. But she actually, she said she had about 20 people in it yesterday. So it must've gone well. Good. Good. And let's see how, um, how many go to meeting licenses or accounts do you have? Okay. Um, and how do you manage registrations? Okay. So we, um, we had what we had had one account already. Uh, and just so that you know, the, the costs, um, the go to meeting, I think if you take it on a yearly basis, it's like 1495 a month. Uh, if you get a month to month, it's like 1995 a month. And I think zoom is right around the same. Uh, we were just using one license, uh, one organizer, and we just use a generic name. so that other, you know, so everybody can jump in on it, but we would, we were banging into each other. We were running programs that, were, that one program was ending into the other. So we just added a second organizer. And then I have a personal go to meeting that I had been using for, for legal purposes and stuff like that, that I was also using quite frankly with my family, my college, college classmates, my, you know, cousins. Um, and so occasionally I'll throw one on there as well. Um, so, you know, technically I guess we're probably using uh, three uh, right now. So that, that would be a cost of about $60 a month, um, which, you know, is, was not really the main main concern, but we we now have split it off where we're treating it almost like the rooms in the library. You know, we in our library we have a big meeting room, the meeting room one, and then a smaller one, meeting room two, and so that's how we're we're chain, we're doing the organizers. Okay, uh, somebody who is it a has a director who's concerned about social media like TikTok or Snapchat. Um, do you have policies in place for these kind of apps and the outreach you're doing on them? Yeah, you know, we actually haven't used a Snapchat much. I got much. I got challenged by a bunch of seventh graders to, to put it up, and so we did. So we, we don't really use it. I, I like to say it because it, it makes people laugh. Okay. Uh, but uh, the other stuff, no. And you know, we're one of the, you know that, that's it's something I've seen on some of the Facebook uh, uh, pages. We have a lot of people uh, in my library who have the authority to post to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Um, and the reason we do that is we put in a protocol about how often we want posting done. And you know, we've, by the way, we've, we've increased that. We, we do, we're doing a lot more posting now during this crisis. Um, and I've laid out the protocol and said, you know, don't step on each other. And, you know, generally this, this is it. And I see so many libraries and I guess everybody is different, but I see so many libraries where everything gets funneled to one person. And it's like, they don't trust everybody else to put stuff up. You know, we, they're so fearful that there's going to be a, uh, a, uh, a posting that's going to be uh, off for some reason. And my feeling is if you don't, if you have a staff member that you don't trust to post something to Facebook in a responsible adult way, then that person shouldn't be dealing with your patrons, shouldn't be dealing with the kids in your building. Um, 
and it's a management issue. Um, we have different voices. Our Facebook page is, is pretty what you would expect from Facebook, okay? Uh, but our Twitter, if you go on our Twitter chat, uh, we try to push the envelope with that, okay? We're, we're a little snarky on that. Um, and, and we tell people that's, that's, the, way, that's the way our Twitter is going to be. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to have somebody that's going to post something that's going to be not just one or two people complaining about, but that's really off. And then you'll deal with the staff member. You'll, you, you correct the behavior, uh, you, delete the, you delete the post, you apologize, and you move on. Okay? And after everybody's done clutching their pearls and, and you know, has revived themselves, they'll, they'll move on. I, 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 this, there's a level of control that is an old-style library control mechanism that's still impacting on social media. And the, the truth of the matter is we can have, and this is a thing I have all the time, whatever your budget is, I don't care what library it is, what, I don't care what your budget is, if people don't know what you have, you are wasting every single penny of it. So the fact that, that most libraries don't have a marketing budget or a, a line of marketing in, in, your, in your budget is insane. Do we take out Facebook ads? Yeah, do we spend a lot of money on it? No, but we gotta let people know what we have. Sorry, different rat, rant to different, different uh, presentation. Um, we have about three minutes left, Tony. Oh, I'm do, sorry. Okay. That's all right. Um, so do you want to stick around for a couple extra minutes and answer some more questions or do you have to go? Nope, I can stick around and let me give, I did it at the beginning, but I'll give it again. My email address is AIOVINO, A-I-O, V as in Victor, I-N-O at OceansideLibrary.com. Email me anything. I'll, I'm, I'm always happy to, to help. Okay. I'll, but grab I'll stick around, sure. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Let's see. Somebody, if somebody's interested in a, a script for staff who are calling patrons, I assume they can email you. Sure. To email me. I'll, I'll be happy to, to do. And our script is going to change over time because we're just starting. So we'll, we'll be tweaking it. Great. And then somebody wants to know, how do you have staff block their phone numbers when they're making those calls? There's a whole protocol and uh, the, you, can, you can Google it. it. It's an easy thing. I think it's star 67. I think that don't hold me to that, but I think that's that. But then there's, a different mechanism and uh, again if somebody wants to email me I'll be happy to uh, to send them the instructions that we have that we believe work. Okay. Uh, a couple questions people are really interested in how you do online trivia. Um, basically they were they were asking trivia questions and then having having people answer them and I and I again now I'm embarrassed I told you I have a great staff so uh, my adult program co coordinator or carrier the mango and uh, our program uh, project coordinator uh, they they did the whole thing. I didn't see it. I didn't go. I'm sorry. But they did a Harry Potter, Potter trivia that went really well, and so we're going to be running more of them. But are again, they, tell me. I'll, I'll I'll pass on how we did it. Are they are they typing or like saying out the answer? Do you know? Oh, okay. Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I've had this cough for a long time. Nobody get worried. Um, how do you? Uh, so now we have some questions about your email blast. Are yes. you, um, somebody's looking for an example or a copy of it. So I assume sure. they can get that from you. Yeah, I showed, I, that's the one I showed before, but okay. yeah, I'll again, email me and I'll, I'll, I'll add you to our email list. You can unsubscribe when you're, when you're tired of it. And they also want to know if you're sending that as a, a press release to the newspapers every day, weekly. Our, our, news, our newspaper gets our e-blast, um, and then when they see something that they like, they'll, they'll shoot it over to us. But for some of the larger stuff, we, um, we actually send, uh, send them a press release. And I think actually, uh, Bonnie, that's how you found us, was a local paper uh, printed something about, about what we were doing week one, mm -hmm. uh, and then that's, that's gotten some play. Yes, yeah, it was a newspaper article. Uh, what, what are you using for your website? I think they're asking maybe whether it's Drupal or... Okay, here's the deal. We actually were in contract to re completely redo our website. If you look at our basic website, it's a really, really, really good 1997 website. It's got a lot of verbiage and things like that. Um, so I, I don't want to say, I don't think we're using WordPress. Um, it's, it's an old format uh, for it. Uh, and uh, uh, the fellow uh, in-house person that, uh, that handles it, Joe, did a great job. And I've been saying all along, I wanted to have a separate page, the Oceanside Library, Oceanside Virtual Library, everything you can do from your couch, okay, in one place. Um, and that's what he kind of created for us. Great. Uh, about how many staff members do you have working on all of this? Well, um, we have 
I would probably say there's five or six people that are, are doing a tremendous amount of it, but we have, we've enlisted everybody. We told everybody when we closed the doors that this was not a vacation, okay, that uh, everybody was on call. Um, and so we've been reaching out and all of the librarians now are, are engaged either doing that chat feature uh, or, um, you know, so it's probably about 10 or 11 people, I would say, plus, you know, I mean, doing little bits and pieces. You know, we have a couple of librarians that are doing three story times a week, you know, that, that kind of thing. We, we split up the work pretty well, with the exception of my way overworked uh, adult program coordinator and project coordinator and the department heads. Uh, let's see. Oh, so can, have you can just... I jump in on that real quick too? Yeah. I said five years ago when I first started and I did not get, it probably wasn't the most politic thing to say that I thought that within five or 10 years or 15 years, we would probably have more people in programming than we did re reference librarians. Um, and the truth of the matter is that that's what's been happening is we've been, as people have retired, we've, re we've looked at the job description and shifted more people into, into almost like, because I think the profession is going more towards teaching. Um, and, uh, and so we've made that shift and everybody that we've hired in the last five years, we've told them part of your job is doing programming of some sort. And we've created a ton of programs based upon that. That's great. Uh, this is a kind of interesting, hard question. Have you decided yet if your summer reading programs will be completely virtual? No, we, we will have a summer reading program. Um, if we're open, it'll be part open and part closed, you know, part, uh, part online. But we're, like I said, all of our logging, I mean, obviously somebody can come in and fill out a little form and, and, and we'll, we'll input it for them. But all of our logging last year was done online. And it's, so whether we're open or we're not, it'll be fine. The only thing we also did with the summer reading club, we also do a community read where we have one book that we ask everybody in the community to read, adult and teens. Um, and so we ran a lot of programs. And so if you came to a program or if you read the community read book, instead of getting one chance in the raffle, you got 10 chances in the raffle. So we kind of try to direct people towards it. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll make that determination because we don't know what's going to happen here in New York. I, I have no idea when we're going to be back open and then when we're going to start running programs. And then somebody wants to know, what do you use to log summer reading? We use Google Forms. Okay. So if you go to that paging ocean, pagingoceanside.com, you can see, uh, it's, it's uh, I think we're calling it the comfortable, cozy book, book thing. Or, or uh, um, if you go to our webpage, you, you'll see that there's a, a link and we use Google Forms and we just, we take down the basic information we need. And then we actually use that, e you know, those, those people that, that log in, we then take their information and uh, we use it to promote author visits, book discussions, book chats, the next reading clubs that come up. Um, so it's a great source for us to find not only readers, but readers that like to participate. Okay, I think our last set of questions are tied to virtual programming and how do you um, decide on statistics for those for reporting? So you just use logins, do you add a couple extra because you assume siblings and caregivers are present? GoToMeeting um, provides us with a list of uh, every, every meeting, the maximum number of attendees that were in that session, uh, the time of the session, et cetera. So we're just gonna pump out that report. Um, as much of a numbers guy as I am, and I do usually take, take uh, I'm, I'm not busting my people's chops about this. We're, we're gonna, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I'm not, listen, we've got, an, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming it's the same for everybody across the country. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, everybody here has got too much going on at home and too, you know, the, I'm pushing them very hard um, and they're joyously doing it, uh, all this programming. I'm not, I'm not worrying about the ticky tax stuff. We'll put up the numbers. We put up the numbers. By the way, New York State, although we have, we have a tax cap, so there's so much we can raise taxes, we, uh, we get virtually no state aid. We get nine, and we just got a 40% cut, four zero percent cut in state aid. Um, and that was before this, that was before this uh, crisis. Uh, so when they want us to fill out the numbers on the state reports, I don't really spend a lot of time. I don't really care. Okay, well, um, thank you, Tony. That is the last of the questions that, that I saw. And I apologize if I missed anyone's um, questions, but you do have Tony's email address and he will respond to you, I'm sure. Uh, just a couple of wrap-up things from me. Uh, if you're interested in taking other webinars from us, in particular uh, related to the COVID-19 crisis, there's a few more coming up later this month. 
The first one is leading with compassion during the COVID-19 crisis. Tony, it sounds like you're doing a great job with that. Um, we have a number of panelists. And I don't have all of them lined up yet, but I will ha have their biographies in there hopefully by um, early next week, but you can go ahead and register. And Jacqueline, my assistant, is putting those in the chat box right now. The other one coming up is about self-care for library staff during the COVID-19 crisis, and I am working on panelists for that as well. Um, but you can go ahead and register now so you have that on your calendar. Just a reminder that the CDC is your uh, best choice for COVID-19 information and your local health department. But I, in particular, I wanted to draw everybody's attention to a section of the CDC website you might not know is there, which is about daily life and coping right now. And I particularly like um, that they have a separate stress and coping section and then a, a section for those of us with uh, animals. I think the kids one is, is to be expected, but the animal one was a nice surprise when I was checking it out. Um, if you're wondering what next, if you're not a member of the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, please consider joining. Um, the membership is institutional, not individual, and all of these links will be sent out to you uh, in an email when I send out the recording next week. You can all also follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and that's sort of it for my plug today. So thank you very much, everyone, for being here, and thank you, Tony, for your time. I very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. This video was produced by the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. Select the circular channel icon to subscribe to our channel. Select a video thumbnail to watch another video from the channel.